Once you are familiar with the product and the quotient rule, we can now look at what is called the chain rule. Now, if you recall, when looking at functions, one operation you can do on functions is taking the composition of two functions, where we've got one function of another function. So now with the chain rule, we're looking at how to differentiate the composition of two functions. All right, now here's, we'll get to the rule shortly. But if I've got f of g of x, so one function that seems to be substituted inside another, we're getting a formula for getting the composition of two functions, or definition of the composition of two functions, derivative of that. So that's f, f composition g, f of g. So it's a function that looks a little bit messy. I'm going to go to the next page and come back. Here's some examples of the composition of two functions. I've got 3x squared minus x to the power 5. So it's the composition of the function x to the power 5 with 3x squared minus x. Same here to the power 9. There's two functions here. Here I've got the cube root of x squared plus 1. Two functions I'm working with. So when I want to find the derivative of the composition of two functions, you can look at it two ways. I've got both ways written down there. You can look at both of them. I prefer the second way. If I've got it as f of g of x, then the derivative is f's derivative in g of x. And I'll show you with an example what we mean by that, times g's derivative of x. So let's look at these examples on the next page. I've got 3x squared mi minus x to the power 5. So what I've got, my two functions at play there is x to the power 5 and 3x squared minus x. So those are the two things. And 3x squared minus x is substituted into x to the power 5. So the what I like to call the outside function, the bigger function, the last thing I did was the to the power 5. So when I differentiate, that's the first thing I need to differentiate. So the chain rule tells me you take the derivative of the power 5 first. Now, I'm going to for a while not call this 3x squared minus x. I'm just call it the thing. So a thing to the power 5, the derivative of that is 5 times the thing to the power 4. Now, if it was just an x, we know that the derivative of x to the power 5 is 5x to the power 4. But now we don't have an x. We've got a whole thing in there. But that's all right. Chain rule tells me the derivative of something to the power 5 is 5 something to the power 4 times the derivative of the something. So whatever's inside there. If I have to take the derivative of the inside part, that's 6x minus 1. So that's what we get. So it's 5 times this thing. So I don't change it. I don't differentiate it inside there. The first step is just looking at the derivative of the to the power 5 portion. So that derivative is 5, that thing to the power 4, times the derivative of that thing. So I'm going to use that terminology. Hopefully it's easier to understand. So the next one. Now I've got to the power 9. So it's a similar type of function. So when I find the derivative, the outside function, the last thing I would do is raise it to the power 9. So the derivative is 9, that thing to the power 8, times the derivative of that thing. So... What is that thing? That thing is root x plus 5x. So 9 times that thing to the power 8 times the derivative of that thing. What's the derivative of root x plus 5x? Is a 1 over 2 root x plus 5. Now the last one is a function to the power of third. It's the cube root, but you can think of it as x squared plus 1 to the power of third. So again, it's a power function. So what does the chain rule tells me? tell me? That derivative is, it's something to the power third. So the derivative is a third, that thing to the power minus two thirds times the derivative of that thing. So what is that thing? That thing is x squared plus one. What's the derivative of x squared plus one? Two x. And that is the chain rule. Now you always have to remind yourself to use the chain rule that you're taking. You've got complicated functions, a function inside another one. So let's take it one step further now. Let's combine the chain rule with the product and the quotient rule that we did in the previous video. So the product rule and the quotient rule and the chain rule. So in this, these two examples, we're going to look at what to do first. What order do I do it in? So let's first look at over all these two functions and the main differences. The first function is something 
multiplied by something. That is the last thing that's happening. If I substitute a value for x, the last thing I've got going for is the multiplication. So the first thing I need to do is the product rule. Whereas the second example is the root of something times something. So the root is the last thing I do. So the first thing I have to do is the chain rule. So this one I've got to start with the product rule. With this one I've got to start with the chain rule. Because the outside function here is to the power of half. And it's something. There's the product. It's just in the something. Whereas the first example, there's very ugly, messy functions. But it's the product of two functions. So let's look at that. So to find this derivative, we're using the product rule. The product rule says, first one times the derivative of the second one. What's the derivative of this one? 4x minus 4 plus the derivative of the first one now it takes a bit of work now here is where the chain rule comes in because this is not just a simple function this is the composition of two functions it's the root of a function so the chain rule says the derivative of the root of something is 1 over 2 root something times the derivative of that something so 1 over 2 root x cubed minus 4x times the derivative of x squared minus 4x, which is 3x squared minus 4. You can write that as the numerator as well if you want. I'm not finished. This is still the product rule. So the, the first times the derivative of the second plus the derivative of the first times the second one. So that one we don't change. 2x squared minus 4x. So it can get pretty messy. So you've got to keep track of what you're doing. This function g, we want the derivative and we see we need to do the chain rule first because I've got the root of something the derivative of the root of something is 1 over 2 root that thing times the derivative of the something that's where the product rule is going to come in but first 1 over 2 root x cubed times 4x minus 2 to the power of 4 so that's the first part so the chain rule says to me I must multiply that with the derivative of what's inside but now when I look inside, I see there's a product of two functions. So I have to use the product rule. So there's a lot coming. I'm putting it in brackets. The product rule says the first times the now I've dealt with the root. I'm not looking at the root again. The first times the derivative of the second. Now I've got to use the chain rule again because this is a function inside a function. What's the derivative of that one? 4 times 4x minus 2 times the derivative of 4x minus 2, which is 4. So that first 4 was the exponent. So it's 4 times 4x squared or 4x minus 2 cubed, make the exponent 1 less, times the derivative of 4x minus 2, which is 4. I'm still busy with the product rule. The first times the derivative of the second plus the derivative of the first, 3x squared times the second, 4x minus 2 to the power of 4. So these could get very complicated and messy, but you've got to keep track of what you're doing. So let's just look at combining the chain rule with the quotient rule. So the first question is, what do we do first? I've got the root of a fraction, the root of a quotient. So the outside thing is the root. So I have to use the chain rule first. So the derivative is 1 over 2 root, that whole thing, times the derivative of that whole thing. We'll get to that part. So 1 over 2 root 2x two plus 5 over 2x cubed plus 1. So I don't do anything with that inside function when I use the chain rule. We just look at the roots part. Okay, times the derivative of what's inside. So now I'm done with the root. I'm taking the derivative of what's inside the root, and that is a quotient. So what's the derivative of the quotient? The denominator squared, 2x cubed plus 1 squared. Write down 2x cubed plus 1. Multiply it with the derivative of the other one, which is 2. That's the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator, 2x plus 5, times the derivative of the denominator, 6x squared. There we go. Now, this is a very ugly, messy function. And later on, keep in mind, there's a section coming up called logarithmic differentiation. It's going to show us an easier way to differentiate an ugly function like that. But that's coming. But there's nothing wrong with doing this. It's just a bit clumsy and messy. But that's where we've got. So that is using the chain rule and then using the chain rule with the product and the quotient rule.